What about in the family situation? Because that's the other area where yeah, yeah. we do get writings from Paul, Ephesians and so on. And what do you do with some of those sort of household rules and, um, you know, the, the famous one in Ephesians, wives yeah, yeah, submit yeah. to your husbands and so on. Actually, A lot of people read that and say, oh, there we go, patriarchal Paul, yeah, uh, product yeah. of his time and so on. Product of his time would never, ever, ever have written what he writes. Okay. About slaves, about children, about about women. Um, because the product of his time, it would have been absolutely battening down the hatches. You know, the, 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 the man rules the roost and slaves and children and women watch out. Uh, your, give your, your give us the trouble. context then. I've, I've obviously cherry-picked a verse well, there. Well, the, 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 the passage about husbands and wives in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, begins, Submit to one another in the fear of the Messiah, and then the women to their own husbands as to the Lord. Um, but then he talks about husbands, love your wives as the Messiah loved the church and gave himself for her. Um, so the, 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 the role of the man there is incredibly demanding. It's think about Jesus going to the cross. Think about all the self-renunciation that went into that. Now, that's how you are to love your wives. That doesn't look like patriarchy to me. But what there is there in the context of a pagan city like Ephesus or Corinth or Rome or wherever it is, um, uh, what there is is a radically different way of life in which in this family there is mutual respect, mutual, mutual enjoyment of different giftedness, um, and a relishing of the other to be the other, and to use our postmodern mm -hmm. language, in which the women are radically respected as fellow Christians, not as subsidiary versions that we men are the real ones. And, and you know, there is, uh, in that context of the pagan world, uh, I think those household codes are really revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that um, we are reading this after all the rhetoric about, you know, Victorian mores, etc., although actually a lot of it was Georgian, mm -hmm. as, as in 1920s and so on. Um, and, and so we react this way and that. But if you just go back to the classical world and read a few books, uh, say um, uh, Robert Harris's novels on Cicero or Tom Holland's brilliant mm. books on, on the Roman Empire, imagine yourself living in that world and how women and slaves and so on were treated mm. then, and then read the household codes. Mm. I know which I'd rather be part of. <laughs> and in that sense, if we are to draw anything from Ephesians, it's that it's about mutual submission it, it, in that it, sense. It's very specifically, um, Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another. And and uh, and Paul is seeing their marriage um, very riskily as uh, a reflection of something going on in Genesis one and two, um, which fits with the whole of the rest of Ephesians, which is about heaven and earth coming together, mm. about Jews and Gentiles coming together, about men and women coming together. That there's something cosmic going on here, which is mutually affirmative. No surprises in our Platonic. Western world, we have discounted earth and think we can get to heaven. So we've discounted femininity and think that masculinity is where it is. No, actually, they both matter. 